You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. We are here again with another amazing episode for y'all today. Today, we're going to talk about the appreciation appreciation advocate if i can say that real quick the appreciation advocate with our special guest steve bazagni is is that right sir is that the close last name is that no you nailed it nailed it so man first and foremost man i want to say thank you for taking time out your super busy schedule because you're not just a successful uh ceo you are in real estate you do a lot of big amazing things and man, for you to take time just to talk to me on my show, first and foremost, thank you for this the opportunity, man. How are you doing today? Oh, fantastic. Can't I can't thank you enough for having me. So it, uh, it's an honor to be here. So today's topic, we are going to basically kind of explore the idea of attraction, the art of attraction, and just simply like stop chasing and start enticing. But not enticing in a way where it's like salesy, just like, you know, worrying about other things and blah, blah, blah. It's more of a bigger picture. And you're going to help illustrate that with the audience. But before we do that and talk about your business, kind of give us a little backstory of you and kind of show us the roadmap of, of what you took along your journey. Sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, so basically where I started, I would say, like, you know, I got to college and... um I was studying accounting as a as a major, and I'm and I did it because that's what everybody told me to do. That was the the quote unquote safe bet, and that was like, okay, let's do this because um, there's always you, people are always going to need accountants, Steve. That's what they told me. I'm always going to need accountants. I'm you know always have a job. I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm thinking, and my it was always my dream, like at least I thought, um, was to be like in corporate America, like that what they did on TV, like shows like The Office, where they oh, everybody wore a suit and tie, you walked around the office, drank at the water cooler, and uh, you know, sat in a cubicle and worked at a computer all day and you made good money and then you went home. Like I thought that was the life I wanted. So I did the accounting thing, whatever. But before I graduated, I actually, um, I was part of a co-op program at St. Joe's university and I, um, got to do an internship. I got to do two, one for four months and one for eight months. And I go through these, these internships and I find out that I absolutely hate this. (laughs) And I'm like, I can't sit in front of a computer for eight hours a day. This is insane. Um, and I can't stare at a a screen. Um, and I am a numbers guy, but I am not a numbers guy for eight hours a day for 30 years. I said, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm already, you know, I just finished my junior year. So I'm like, oh man, I got to go into my senior year knowing I'm like, what can I do? What kind of opportunities are out there that do not require a, a degree or a school or skills that I can just get right into and potentially make an income. Now, of course, sales is the only thing I can do. And I'm like, all right, what kind of sales can I do? And I've won. I'm an, in, I'm more introverted anyway. So sales is not, sales is the last thing I want to do. I, you know, getting in front of people, I mean, God, I was like the worst thing ever. So, um, so I get into uh, to real estate. I'm like, all right, you can sell one house for 300,000 and make six grand. I was like, all right, well, that, there you got my attention. <laughs> I can figure out this introvert thing. <laughs> so, uh, I was like, okay, so, uh, I get my real estate license and I go into, um, selling real estate. Well, actually I started flipping houses first with my parents, um, flipped a couple houses, realized that, you know, babysitting contractors all day was not something I, I could do, but the houses that we were selling that the real the realtor that we were using, um, we had a couple of real estate agents and I realized that I, I could do their job better than they could. I said, I can do this job. I said, I should just get my license and do this. So I did. And I did really, really well with it. And, you know, I got all the fun awards like rookie of the year and all that great stuff. But I was just like, finally, I got something that pays. I don't need a, a, a schooling to do this. And I, I, you know, I started making real money. Uh, you broke the six figure mark for the first time when I was 23. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, and then, you know, I get to like, you know, probably like age like 29, I'd say probably like 27, 28. And I start feeling this internal pull away from real estate. And it's just like, like, I'm, I feel like it's almost, it's almost torturous because you know, you're really good at something. Like when you're obviously I'm getting paid really good money to be a real estate agent. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like selling $20 million worth of real estate per year. What the hell is going on? And I'm like, 
why am I feel this internal pull away from it? It's it's almost like you're working within your purpose, but you're not. And that's the, that's the part that tortured me the most. And I was like, so eventually I was like the when at the beginning of my real estate career, I, I was taught by a mentor of mine that it was better to be relational rather than transactional. Don't do the find them, fleece them, forget them type of real estate, build the relationships, get the referrals, work with people who want to work with you. You'll have a better time doing your business that way. And I was like, that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Let's do that. So that's why I built my business around relationships and 73% of my business ended up being by referral. Um, so I was like, okay, this is awesome. And then I started becoming known as the referral guy around the office. Uh, and a lot of real estate agents were other real estate agents were asking me like, Hey, Steve, what can I do to, you know, build up my database and get some more sphere of influence marketing going on? Like, what can I do? What can, and then I realized that like, I tell them what I was doing and they were like, Oh man, I just don't have time for that. I just don't have time for that. And then the answer was always, I don't have time for that. And then I was like, wow, well, you know, the fact, there might be a market there. So eventually I was just like, I, I, I love giving and loving on people in my own business. I said, what if I just do this forever for other people, for other small businesses, real estate and outside of real estate. So that's how appreciation advocate came into the picture. And I was like, now I literally do that for, you know, I started the company and, and I, that's literally what I do for other small business owners who want to love on their clients, who just, who want to appreciate them, who want to give them gifts, who want to make sure that they stay top of mind, but they just don't have those massive corporate budgets. And they don't have that, like, they don't have all day long to sit and like wrap gifts or write personal notes and really give their clients that are putting the food on their table, the, the attention they need, but they still want to appreciate them somehow. So like, that's literally what we do now. And that's how appreciation advocate got started. Listen, I'd be focused radio talking to our guest, Steve Bazanic, excuse me, Bazagani. And, uh, when you talk about your, your, your business and what you're doing to help small businesses show that appreciation, I mean, that's very important for people to really understand. People are listening right now. It could be an entrepreneur. It could be someone who's about to start a business. It's always been in business for a while. The point is we all have to, at a certain point, learn this skill. And how does one person, before they even go to your website, appreciationadvocate.com, what's something that they should try to understand first as far as the fundamentals of why this is such an important skill? Uh, the fundamentals is actually, um, it's more, probably I'd say two things. It's about a lot of people talk about, they want clients for, because they want their financial bank account. They want to get connected to them. So they get their money at some point. I mean, that's how you get paid. Um, but you'll get to their financial bank account quicker if you invest in their emotional bank account. Um, and that's where a lot of people don't start there. They start right. They start going right for the money, start going right for the sale versus making the deposits in their emotional bank account. If you make deposits in their emotional bank account, it will be easier to make withdrawals from their financial bank account. So that's what I, I think, um, starting there. Like, so if you, you know, giving gifts to people that are important and relevant to them, not to you. So like, I'm not going to go, you know, on your birthday, I'm not going to send you, a t-shirt with my logo on it. You'd be like, what the heck is this? This is the worst gift ever. <laughs> like I thought, my, I thought my birthday was supposed to be about me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, that's where I'd start out, um, just going there. And then the other thing is, um, you know, making a good impression. And I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book right now called the impression scale. And the, it's all about, it's about how no impression is, how no impression is created equal. And, you know, first and second impressions are heavier weighted than others. And that's basically, whenever you're dealing with people and building relationships with them, you want to make sure your those impressions are as consistent as possible. You want to make sure that they're, they're positive ones and not like, you know, a, you don't, you certainly don't want them to be negative or neutral. So uh, the, the overall theory there is at the end of at as more, the more impressions you have of, of someone, it makes them, it gives them the ability to make a more accurate judgment of you. So, mm -hmm. If you're consistent with your behavior, they will have an accurate judgment of you. But if you're inconsistent, they won't know who you are. They won't know what you stand for. And it will be harder for them to refer you and invest their time in you and invest their money in you. And that's true right there, what you just said, because uh, that that could be uniform to any industry. I mean, yep. as long as you're making money, 
yeah, people don't, they don't really like robots that much. I mean, they kind of like the convenience of a robot getting something done faster, but you can never uh, do away with the human touch. The human touch is always something that will forever be important, especially if you're trying to make an impact with your platform. Once again, yeah. man, we're talking to Steve Bazzagini. And, man, I appreciate you being patient with me with your last name. <laughs> but <laughs> speaking of how your company uh, helps your clients uh, show them the ropes of appreciation and everything, you do these little things that help them stick out from the rest. Kind of touch on that with the audience. What are some examples that you are doing with your clients to assist them appreciating uh, the ones, like you said, are helping put food on their table? Sure. So, I mean, we have several different packages, um, but like I would say we don't we don't do the little things. We actually do the uh, some really cool big things, too. So like um we, what we're not going to do is we're not going to send promo. We don't do promo items. Like anything that has your, like if you were a client of mine and you said, Steve, I want you to send out, I am refocused radio pens to my clients as gifts. Like I would never let you do that because it's about you in that point. That's, mm -hmm. you know, not the recipient. A good gift is always about the recipient. So um, what we do is we'll, we'll order a series of gifts uh, that is customized to the client. So what we do is we have one client, a real estate agent and they, uh, a popular gift is Cutco uh, products. The Cutco brand itself is like a really, really strong brand and it's a high quality gift and it lasts for literally forever. Um, so I, what I, what we, 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 and they can be customized. So like sometimes as, as for like a real estate agent, what they'll do is they'll do like um, a gift that's custom to their client. Like, Hey, here's a knife with their favorite quote written on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a high quality knife and it's a quote that's important to the person who they're giving it to. Um, we've had like, sometimes we do retreats for like coaches and stuff. Like we have a coach, like if you're like a coaching company or you're something like that and you're hosting a, a retreat of like your top 10 to 20 people or whatever, um, we'll do the gifting for them beforehand uh, or after or both, um, the only thing you, you really just have the really the way the process works is you just kind of show up to you get on a phone with call with me. Uh, uh, you tell me what you're trying to do. Tell me about your people. Uh, we send you like a packet and then you just tell us about your top 25 people or who, however many you're trying to do. Uh, and once we know a little bit about each one, we can give a gift custom to each one. Um, and then all you have to do is sit back and, wait and relax. <laughs> and then we'll tell you when the gift's going to show up and you know, you sign off on it. You, once you sign off on it, we do it all. And, then you just make your phone calls so like two or three days after they show up and, and, and deepen that relationship further. Um, if, if they don't reach out to you beforehand, because a lot of times the gifts are, are so impactful that people reach out to the, to the, to the client before they can call their, their customer. Hmm. This is uh, before this radio talking to Steve Bazzagini and on your website, appreciationadvocate.com. There's two things I really like, man. Uh, this a list of transforming your business from this dot 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 to this. Oh, yeah. Two things really stuck out. Uh, the first one is you and your sales teams are burnt out. <laughs> yes, that's one bad thing. And then you have clients that you absolutely cannot stand. Mm -hmm. Those are really, <laughs> I think, a lot of people can eventually experience that. And mm -hmm. why is it? something that people should because i like the key word transform transform their thinking their habits and their perspective if you will from going from that place into what you are taking them with your services because it's so easy to get burnt out because you're tired of dealing with so and so but you're helping people to look at it from a different perspective to where you go from being burnt down into not standing, uh, maybe their personality or whatever it may be, to making them becoming that awesome client that just constantly is feeding your your pipeline with with new people. Sure, uh, great question. So, uh, in terms of burnout and clients you absolutely hate, uh, one causes the other. <laughs> so, so, when you're working with people that absolutely stink. Um, they, they wear you down. Like, I mean, you, I, as when I was in real estate, what I 
what in real estate, I had one client to, I might have like six or seven deals under contract. And one of them is more annoying and takes more time up than all of the other five combined because they're just such pain in the butts. So what to stay away from that, like, obviously you don't want their referrals. So like, you know, you can, you know, help them, you know, you finish out the transaction and respectfully you kind of back off and you don't, I, you don't reintroduce, you reintroduce them back to the marketplace, uh, as a, as a, a free customer, but the ones that you love, you never let them go. And you start building that relationship. And then here's where you transform from working with clients you hate to clients that you love and then, and, and getting rid of burnout versus, uh, getting rid of or installing, uh, fulfillment. Um, cause when you start working with people that you like, it gives you fulfillment, it gives you happiness, it gives you joy to sell a home to somebody or even whatever your service is, um, to fix someone's HVAC or to coach somebody who, whatever you do, when your service makes the other person genuinely happy and gives them exactly what they're looking for. And then some that's fulfilling to you because then they genuinely appreciate you. So your job now is, you know, they appreciate you. Then you may got to make sure that you love on them even harder because if they love you that much, they're going to tell their friends and family. And if they, their friends and family, birds of a feather flock together. So if they appreciate you, their referrals will, will be the same. And that's why you don't get the referrals of the a-holes because they, they will come with more a-holes versus the good people will come with more good people. So, and it will increase the fulfillment. So that's the best thing I would say. And, and then when, obviously when you're working with these people, they, they, they juice you up, they fire you up because it's like, oh man, I just got all these clients and they all love me and they all appreciate what I do. And it's, and they're all thankful for me the way I am for them. And it's just a mutually beneficial relationship all around. And when people listen to shows and podcasts like this one with, with people like you giving this very solid, like advice and wisdom based on your own personal experience, it's so easy for people to take it and just be like, Oh, that, that sounds great. I feel better. And then, but you can't stop there though. What I'm getting at is this is a practice. This mm -hmm. is, this is not just like, Oh, I heard such a good, you know, message today, changed my life. Well, that's great. But when life hits you, <laughs> are you yes. still going to feel great? Or are you going to take what Steve is saying and say, okay, I need to apply this. So some listeners right now, they're like, All right, you know what? There's some things I can kind of tweak maybe in my personality, you know, skills. What's one thing that you carry with you that's helped you with your personality when you're dealing with a new client or just a client that might be a little rough, but it's still an opportunity for you. For sure. Um, and I'll, and I have an answer for that. And then, but you did say something that I thought was interesting. So, um, when you were talking about, um, people taking action and stuff like that, um, or just, you know, kind of hearing a couple things, uh, what I, I, one of the reasons, um, I, I would say one of the reasons people don't take action is because they have the time. And that's where, that's where I don't want people to, to get stuck. So I would say get, don't, don't get stuck, take the action. Um, but, but one of the things people can do today, um, I would say what, what I do when I, when life smacks me in the face is just keep saying please and thank you. And I know that sounds so old school and basic AF, but, mm -hmm. but like, but that like, so and Matt, whenever you go to like a local coffee shop, restaurant, a, whatever, uh, any kind of place, you know, even like McDonald's, whenever you buy something, whatever you do, just go up whenever you're talking to the person behind the counter or even at Walmart when you're checking out or whatever, um, just say thank you. Like, and, and just watch how it makes you feel because like when I'm dealing with like an a-hole client, like some, like my perspective shifts from, it doesn't go, it's not, damn, I have an a-hole client. It's damn, how lucky am I to at least have a client? You yeah. know what I mean? So like, Hey, you're in the game. You're not, you could be, it could be worse. Um, I do have what I do every morning. It's called a gratitude journal. I did order it off of Amazon. I think they're like $7. <laughs> right. So like you can just basically every morning you start off with like writing down two or three things that you're grateful for. You know, like this morning I wrote like having a roof over my head, my two dogs and food in the fridge. That was today's entry. But like yesterday might've been something else, but like, these are basic things like 
you know, my car started today. That's awesome. You know, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. yeah, right. Like those are things that you, that you don't take for granted that you do take for granted, but when you write them down, you don't take them for granted as much. And it brings an overall level of happiness to a neck, to your neck, to the next level. So, um, anybody who's listening, I would tell them like, if, if you want to make one significant change, uh, just buy a gratitude journal, go to amazon.com or whatever, I uh, you know, you know, and buy one, whatever, whatever one that looks like it might fit your needs the best. And don't go crazy on it. Just do it every morning before you you start your day and watch how much, I think there's, there's like several studies that show people who start their day with gratitude, uh, are overall have overall more happiness in their life, in their life. And I think that's, uh, something that people could use today. I like what you said there, because that ties in completely with what we're talking about to top it for, uh, the art of attraction because it's exactly that mm-hmm. you're being intentional with what you're trying to do. And as someone years ago told me, it was like, for one, think of yourself. Like if you were this X big brand, ask yourself, like how they're making their customers happy because obviously X brand, if they're big and they have this massive campaign, right. And they have all these employees that are paying, it didn't just happen by accident. It's not like they just got lucky, you know? Yeah. Maybe they got lucky for the first, you know, five seconds, but then the work kicked in and they had to maintain that and, and have, have a management system to be able to grow that opportunity. When you are helping your clients, and this is the last question before we let you go, when you're helping your clients to shift their mindset from, from their old habits, what are their response uh if you can share one where it finally kicks in, like, you know what? Jeez. Yeah. I, I need to like sharpen my skills in this area because it's night and day. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I got this, this piece of advice from Steve Harvey. Um, he's like literally one of my favorite people to listen to. Um, and he was on the TV once and, or YouTube, I forget where I was watching him. And he was just like, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you keep getting what you've been getting. And I'm like, yeah, well, pretty much. So I'm like, all right, well, do I like what I've been getting? No. Okay. What needs to change to get to where I need to be? And then that, then you start the process of, of, instead of saying, can't you start to, you start asking how, and then it's like, okay. Cause when you say I can't do that, that shuts all doors. But when you start asking how it starts, you, your brain literally starts to go into thinking mode and it's like, okay, how do I get to seven figures a year? How do I get to eight figures a year? How do I get to six figures a year? Whatever you're trying to do, or if you're trying to, you know, you know, date the girl, the the, the cute girl in class, or whatever it is, uh, whatever you're trying to do, if you ask, you start asking yourself how, and you stop doing what you've been doing and keep getting what you've been getting, you start asking yourself how, like, and that that's that changes the whole thought process, the connections of the neurons in the brain, and, and everything starts to open up. It's like, how do I do that? And then you start going and going and going. It's like, oh wow. Okay, cool. This is, this is possible actually. Or, Hey, if I just did this, um, this could happen and you start believing in yourself and then self-belief comes up and self-esteem starts to build. And then you have the magic, the magic of all of it is momentum. And then once momentum is on your side, it's game over. I like that, man. And I also hear things like, you know, not just find other people that are like-minded with, uh, like you, as far as, to level up and can, you know, help you get to their level. But it's also like, you just got to get off your butt. <laughs> you yeah. just got to do it, man. Because it's like a quick illustration. It just popped my head talking to you. But uh, when yeah. someone's, you know, going to lunch and they're just sick of like sitting at this table, like say, you know, back in school when you at the lunch with the cool kids or whatever. Well, yeah. Say you're at the lunch table and there's no cool kids and it's just all this chaos and all this craziness and it's like messing you up, stretching you out. Why would you do that to yourself every day and do the same thing? Yep. When you can literally change your whole life <laughs> and yeah. sit somewhere else. Maybe you start a table and all the cool kids come to you. But I'm getting that it's a metaphor in life. Like if you seriously ready for that change, you listen to someone like Steve Bazzagni and you just got to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have so many people, cool people like you on the show. It's like a common thread. At the end of the day, it's like two things. Don't give up and just do it. Just do it. 
to stop stop saying, okay, when I feel better, you know, when God gives me a sign, God ain't giving you no sign. He ain't got no more signs to give you. He's probably been giving you signs your whole life. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, he's been slapping you in the face with them. <laughs> like, come on, man, just go. You go, and it's gonna work. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's awesome. Like it, it. Um, I think it's. Uh, I mean, the book of of Proverbs in the Bible is really like a really cool book for that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I mean, Steve Harvey's one of my. He's on my Mount Rushmore of mentors, and he's like the fourth guy. But like, I really like that. For and he's on there for like religious and motivational purposes. But like, he's got like like several Bible verses that he knows that have really transformed my life as well as, I mean, obviously his, but it was mine as well. Like his favorite one was like, you know, you have not cause you ask not. And I'm like, well, that makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> Just so simple. And it's funny you said that cause I can't help but think cause the whole point of like your business appreciation advocate.com it's like, not just you have not cause you asked not, but to add to that, Maybe you should start asking God to give you more patience, give mm-hmm. you the ability to be more happy, give you the ability to appreciate others, give you the ability to express gratitude with what you already have. Because I think we can get, I don't want to speak for myself, but sometimes we can get a place where we are successful, but not as much as we could be if we were just more uh, grateful. Right. Mm, yep. Because we can get into a entitlement uh, mindset where it's like, well, I've been doing this and bust my butt and blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting that you say that. So it, it, in psychologically speaking, the second you start complaining about something, that is the birth of entitlement inside the brain. So the two inside the human brain, two things can't exist. Gratitude and cynicism cannot exist in the human brain. Like I like chemically, I don't think that's even possible. So like if you see, if you ever catch yourself complaining, it's because you're entitled, you're acting entitled. And I, I don't care what you're complaining about. Like even me, like if I'm, it's like, oh my God, my kid won't just go to freaking sleep. Like, you know, like that, like <laughs> yeah. that's like, that's entitlement. Like, w- like me, oh, I should have a kid that sleeps. Like, well, you know what I mean? Like that's not. I'm not actually entitled to that. Kids don't sleep. That's, that's just how they are when they're below, <laughs> when they're under two years old. <laughs> right. It's like, right. could you just stay up and leave me alone? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, why don't I ask for that? They'll go, the, they'll go to bed. Right. <laughs> that's funny, man. Yeah. Once again, man, listen, I refocus radio talking to Steve Bizogany and you can go to his website, appreciationadvocate.com. real quick before we let you go. What's the call to action that you want our listeners to take if they are ready to work with someone like you? Yeah. I mean, if it's something, if you want us to help come help you with your business or, or even gratitude level, I mean, we, we have all kinds of different packages. So like I, we, we do teach it each week too. So you could either email me directly, um, right on my email address, Steve at appreciation advocate.com. Um, S T E V E Steve. Um, or you could go to check out our webinar that we do on Wednesdays at one o'clock. Uh, and that's appreciation advocate.com slash webinar. Awesome, man. You can check out Steve Bazakini. Like you just said, most go go to his website, appreciationadvocate.com. Man, once again, I want to say thank you, Steve, man, taking time to schedule to talk to Iron Focus Radio. Yeah, thanks for having me.